Hey St. John's River Keeper community, Megan Riggs here with this week's Nature Skill Sharing. We have biologist and hobbyist photographer Rhonda Lovett to share some storytelling tips through photography with us. Take a look. Hi everyone, this is Rhonda Lovett. I've been a St. John's River Keeper member for several years now. And I recently got more actively involved when a local developer proposed to clear almost 10 pristine acres of riverfront habitat over at Hallows Cove basically changing it from public parks and recreation to community commercial. I'm a biologist by training and currently pursuing a Florida Master Naturalist certification. As a native Floridian, born and raised in St. Johns County and a current resident of St. Johns County, one of the fastest growing counties in Florida, I've seen firsthand how critical it is to ensure I'm doing my part to educate as many people as I can about the St. Johns River and its tributaries and the issues impacting its health. So how does a biologist and outdoor water sports aficionado go about advancing the mission to help with educating neighbors and visitors of the importance of conserving water, thinking about nutrient pollution, its impact on the river and all that the river supports, and encouraging neighbors to become more interested in, and involved in the policies that impact our river and all it supports? Well, I turn to my other passion, photography. I'm not a studied photographer by any means, but firmly believe that when you're passionate about your subject, that passion will show through. I've been able to use photography as a way to help people better appreciate our river, its delicate balance, and hopefully educate people on ways they can get a little more knowledgeable with our local area and wildlife. Hopefully, I've also been able to share a little more about the historical significance and the ways people can get out and enjoy the many opportunities the St. John's and her tributaries offer for recreation through my adventures. So from a nature fan, a supporter of our river, recreational waterwoman, and hobbyist photographer, here are a few tips I'm happy to share for all of my St. John's River Keeper friends. First, many people think you need a fancy camera to take great landscape and wildlife shots. The truth is, I take about as many shots with my cell phone and my GoPro as I have with my more expensive cameras. Just go out and shoot with what you have. The best pictures you take are the ones that you take with the camera that is with you. Kind of like real estate. Location, location, location. Photography is all about finding great locations. Just get out and explore. There are so many county parks, conservation areas, and trails along the river. Just get out there. To me, the best pictures come from some of the most off-beaten path locations. Sometimes I just take my bike and ride to the creeks or swamps way back off the main trail. I really consider these are the true gems where you could really explore and find the most unique plants and trees, birds, wildlife in general. Paddling along the riverbanks will also provide for some great nature photography opportunities. Be sure to take a small dry bag though for your camera or phone. You really don't want to get that wet. Explore at high tide, low tide, sunrise, sunset, when it's sunny, when it's overcast, when there's clouds, when there's no clouds. Also, the same area can look completely different in different seasons. Winter, with fewer leaves on the trees, can change the entire perspective of the shot. And yeah, we actually do have color here in Florida. The fun part is finding things you don't know about, educating yourself, and then sharing your pictures with the little educational nuggets that you've just learned about. When we ourselves learn more about our surroundings and how they depend on their specific habitats and clean waters and share our knowledge, it helps more people become aware and sometimes that one person can have a big impact on many others. So share your findings and help others learn too. Photography is all about storytelling. So you have to tell your story. I spent many hours in my childhood fishing and playing in the many local creeks that flow around the river. To this day, I love to explore off the beaten path around our creeks. I love to share my pictures of the birds and other wildlife and their habitat along the rivers and the creeks. 
Think about ways to frame your shot so that it helps tell the story you're looking to share. What was going on at the time you took the picture? Where do you want to draw the viewer's eye? What is it that you want someone to know about that picture? Think of ways to use different textures and patterns in nature. Thinking of sand, clouds, leaves, reflections. How can you capture the wind blowing the Spanish moss in an old oak tree to complete the mood of the picture? Oftentimes, I use what I'm doing to help tell my story. For example, when I'm out on my paddleboard, I'll include that in the picture. It tells my story. It shows what I enjoy, what I'm passionate about. I'm also really fascinated by the cypress trees in our area. For some reason, they just speak to me. They tell a story, and they're so very different. They all have so much character. So I love to take pictures of trees showcased in all their glory. I also like to tell my story of why a clean river with no pollution is so important to me. I share pictures of what I find out on the river, both interesting and really cool, and sometimes not so cool, like what we have done to destroy some of the habitat and some of the things I pick up out of the river as I'm paddling. Really think about how to draw people into your picture and involve them. Sometimes you can trigger a spark in someone else's passion that makes them want to learn more about what you're sharing. And maybe it helps them want to learn more about this area, its history, and the importance of conservation. The next thing I would offer would be to slow down and be observant. Listen to what's going on around you and look for what nature's telling you. Being out on the river or hiking a trail is a great way to escape everything that's going on around you in the world. Take a pause, connect with nature. It takes about 10 minutes of quiet pause after your arrival for birds and other wildlife to start to return to its undisturbed state. Wait for that to happen. Listen to what's going on around you. Soak in their environment. A few important reminders when shooting wildlife a telephoto lens really is the best option here. You really don't want to disturb any animals in their habitat as it can really put both you and that animal in danger. And always be sure to keep a respectful distances and try to remain unobserved. Some of my best shots have come after nature pauses when I can sit and soak in all and appreciate that they, what the area is trying to tell me. Think about angles, lighting, get down on the ground for a different perspective, Get your feet wet. Kneel down to get at ground level for plants. Shoot into the treetops for a completely different perspective. Another tip when you're out in nature shooting pictures, never back up to take a shot if you have not first looked behind you to see what's there and where you're gonna put your feet. Make sure you're ever vigilant of your surroundings. Let nature speak through your shot. Again, what's the story of the location and what does it mean to you? What do you want others to know about the location, the plant, the animal? And how can you use the shot to educate someone about the importance of the plant, the animal, or the location? And finally, we really tend to take things for granted more than we realize. We can forget how powerful of a tool, a compelling story or photo of our favorite location, wildlife, or story really is. Even if you don't think a few photos will make a difference, chances are they probably will to someone somewhere. And that someone you influence may be inclined to get involved in a way that impacts many. You just never know. So get out there and explore. Get out and learn. Share your story and the story of things that you find along your journey. You just never know. We hope you enjoyed Rhonda's nature skill sharing. Be sure to follow her on Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to get involved with sharing your pictures with a St. John's River Keeper, check out hashtag hey, SJRK, look at this. And we will be sure to share your photos with the St. John's River Keeper community. Take care.